One more, everybody. One more central bank to go, and then we're done. We're done. Good morning, everybody. Morning, gents. Morning. What do you mean? We're done. We're done forever. No, done forever. We're not. I we're not doing central banks anymore. Had enough of them. <laughs> I think there's two, right? Good morning. I oh think... yeah, we got. Uh, well, I wasn't counting uh, Turkey. <laughs> yeah, we can stuff a few turkeys as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are do you, you like Ryan? turkey, Kay? Uh, uh, still, do you like turkey? We know you don't like lamb. Do you like turkey? I do like turkey, yes. There you go. Probably the driest meat on the face of the planet. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's probably why you like it. Like a bit of dry humour, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> all good. How are you, Kay? You good? Yeah, all good, man. All good. Good stuff. Okay, all right, we're, we're almost there. Oh, we're almost there. Let's get through it. Come on. <laughs> it's it's not hard work, really. We laugh and joke, but it's all good fun. We enjoy doing it. But there is a whole ton of comments to get through, so we shall start there. Um, not seeing much out of uh, Asia today, so um, I'll let uh, you guys throw that in if you see anything. Um, not that I've seen much at all. Um, right, Brexit stuff then. We'll kick off with that. The um, Northern Ireland Protocol thing that was going through Yesterday passed 515 to 29, so went through with flying colours. Um, uh, here's a headline for you. The Bank of England says it warned US regulators over the SVB risks before it collapsed. So for once, the Bank of England getting in front of something, according to them. Wow. Um, yeah, wow, indeed. You know, they couldn't see the pension stuff coming up and kicking them in the face, um, but they saw something going on in the US. So anyway, they're claiming a win there. Um, the SMB, they raised 50 pips as expected today, um, did a bit of a brush over uh, in terms of monetary policy versus financial stability, um, saying that they're ready to intervene in currency markets uh, as usual. They don't rule out further interest rate rises uh, and have been selling foreign FX over the past few months. Uh, Jordan was out with a few comments uh, saying they're raising rates to counter the renewed increase in inflationary pressure. Uh, further rate rises cannot be ruled out to ensure price stability. Um, we'll sell Forex in the future and also remain willing to buy to counter excessive appreciation pressure on the franc. So playing both sides of the market still um, not manipulating whatsoever, of course. Um, Norge's went uh, there 25 as expected, taking rates to 3%, um, and they say the bank rate will be raised further in May. Uh, now sees the key rate at 3.18% in Q2 2023. Um, any particular comments uh, you dug out of those, Kay? No, there some um, no I, I was expecting them to um, okay, we, we could say that the, the another rate hike in May is, is, is a bit more than what other central banks may be doing right now, but then they're still in the middle of the pack. Um, I was ex perhaps expecting some stronger wording on the weak Norwegian krona, but um, no, I haven't seen anything that really stood out. Um, Norwegian krona strengthened just a little bit on uh, on, on the... Uh, on the statement, but then uh, no, I uh, haven't really seen anything. Um, they all they say like uh, if everything goes according to plan, they expect another rate uh, hike in May. But uh, there is considerable uncertainty. So uh, it's it's no, I haven't really, I haven't seen much to to stick uh, our teeth in uh, on 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 the Norges Bank. Cool. Um, the S and B, yeah, I mean. Um, what should I say? say? Faithful to themselves, uh, we are playing both sides of the of the medal. Um, it, they're still in catch up mode, right? Because we know they have a meeting uh, only once a quarter. So, um, um, there there was some sort of doubt um, surrounding the fifty BPs on the back of this Credit Suisse um, story, but. They they really they didn't spend more than uh, one paragraph on uh, on the whole thing and then uh, brush it under the table again and they they are definitely still what what in in the same mode that they started months and months ago um, is that um, as they said that they had been selling effects in the in the past months 
they want to fight inflation with uh, with the currency. So um, for the trading side of it, I uh, just wanted to add, I've, I'm still long Euro Swiss. And because I think we still may see some outflows due to the Credit Suisse UBS story, but uh, S&P seems to be um, determined enough not to let Swiss franc um, devalue from here. Uh, which is uh, completely different than what they did for for many years before. So I'm uh, I'm more going to range trade this than really uh, thinking we we may see a move uh, up to um, well above parity. Let's put it that way. And I, I I thought there was a, a real chance for this to to especially as well with the euro strength to go at least test uh, one double three quarters again on the euro Swiss. But um, I'm I'm not sure we're even going to get it. I think the next few days or the next week will tell us enough and if it's going nowhere i'm uh, just going to um, call it an adventure and uh, taking a few pips out of it and uh, that'll be good enough yeah i know you were you were short into this one as well weren't you up at uh what? 80s i think it was no i'm long I'm, I, I bought it the other day i bought it the other day um average around 99 Oh, so that was just a, that was a, oh, sorry. I thought you went short this morning just no, before no, the meeting. No, no, that was no, a close. No. Was it? I'm just uh, I'm managing my longs actually, um, yeah. but it's. I, I think if there would have been panic, and it's it still could come. You know, those outflows can still come. I think that the the Credit Suisse, the the shareholders, bondholders are still trying to um, to see some of the money back. Uh, if if not, I still think there may be some outflows. But uh, it looks as if uh, S and B is really going to uh, to keep uh, to keep it very tight. Uh, this one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I jumped into a, a small long down here as well, just on the reaction. You know, the market euro had been strong, as we know. Um, we knew what the S and B was going to do. Um, so this move to me was a was a fade. So I jumped in a bit as well. I've got. Uh, most of it away. Um, got my stop at break even. So, like you say, we'll see uh, where it goes from here. But it's not looking like it wants to go back to those highs just yet. No, no it's um, no. I I I thought there would have been a, already a little bit more stress. So, um, as I said, I'm just managing it. If it goes goes back through 99, I think I'm gone. I mean, right now, yeah. as the people know in the room, I'm I'm always actively trading my positions around. Um, so the average is is pretty cool but um no if it goes back through 99 i'm gone mate um yeah. it's i think this i think at the moment this one's just moving on the back of uh, the euro side more than the swiss yeah. side uh, coming off a bit now anyway but uh we'll dig into uh the price moves in uh, in greater detail um over uh, the next few minutes um, we'll move on to the ECB. ECB's Lane says the banking crisis may turn out to be a non-event uh, and be one factor among many or have a macro impact, but that's a tail scenario. Um, he uses the buzzword as well. If the baseline holds up, absolutely, there's more to do. Um, ECB's Ren making the case that everything's A-OK -okay in the Eurozone by saying the Euro area bank buffers are double those of the debt crisis. So plenty of... Uh, Plenty of bullets in the uh, armory. Um, ECB's uh, Wunsch says have been dissecting the bank sector data and figures are not showing any problems. Um, the core is more sticky than headline inflation. Must focus on both headline and core inflation. Um, without the 50 pips hike, markets would have worried. He's uh, quite correct on that. If markets stabilise, we may have more to do on rates. Um, ECB's REN was out uh, further after that, saying that the market terminal rate expectations are somewhere, are somewhat lower um, than their expected terminal. So the market uh, apparently underpricing where the ECB are going to have to go so hawkish from REN. Uh, it says the terminal rate is a volatile concept um, and the ECB must focus first on price stability, then financial stability. Uh, ECB's Visco says need to be very prudent with monetary policy. Credit growth has stopped in Europe, uh, says the important thing is avoiding a credit crunch. Um, this was something that um, is falling into uh, what Powell said last night as well. Uh, ECB's Pancetta, as we like to call him, says banks will pass on rates more 
compared with in the past. Um, I can tell you one thing in the UK, we are not getting, uh, savers are definitely not getting the full uh, rate hikes that uh, we've been seeing, keeping the um, margins for savers very well, depressed. Well, what do you Obviously, actually get for a for a rel uh, you know relatively simple deposit in a in a bank these days? Uh, one pip over fuck all, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was looking at the, I'm asking because I was looking at the um, the U.S. size of the city and uh, you know uh, B of A and all that, and you know the deposit rates are something like half a percent or, yeah. or even less than that, and I'm like, yeah. rates are five percent. It cannot be, but uh, yes, it is. <laughs> There's loads, there's loads of deals coming out um, where, you know, you can get four and a half, five percent, um, but it's on limited amount. So, you know, like the first two thousand pounds and then you oh. get this right after. Um, wow. so unless you want to open up 200 accounts. You, know, <laughs> really is a yes. you, you can always get a free pen or pencil when you go to, to a bank. And you, <laughs> so, I mean, well, you, you find doing, you know? a free pen these huh? days. You are, you find one that's offering a free pen. You'd be good luck to have to find a branch. I had I, I had one from Metro Bank. I had one from Barclays. I mean, <laughs> wherever I went, I mean, I always told her, not stealing actually. They're there to for the for the using, right? So I I've, uh, I always took one because we, we we get nothing at all on the on the account. So that that at least saves me some um, some ink for when I do my posties. Exactly, <laughs> and, and you've got to, you can you can use COVID rules. You know, if you've touched a pen, you don't want to give anyone else the lurgy. Um, so you might as well take that pen home with you. Absolutely. Um, right. Yes, we, we don't endorse stealing pens from bank branches, people. Um, no, but they are there. Right? They are there, free, free to use. And uh, that's yeah. why we haven't got savings rates because people keep pinching all the pens, and uh, it's costing them billions a year. Oh, so uh, stop pinching pens. We might get a better rate, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Bundesbank's Nagel says further hikes needed in coming meetings if inflation develops as projected. Um, the job is not yet done, said the ECB must be bold and decisive. Rate hikes are a journey and a journey isn't over. So very hawkish comments from the German, um, as to be expected from those guys. Um the Bank of Canada had their summary of the March decision, um, the deliberations there, and um, in the basically in the summary, no one made mention of, of considering a hike at the last meeting, um, and they agreed to emphasise the conditionality of the rate pause, um, so taking away any hawkish uh, slant there from uh, their deliberations. Um, Powell's arch enemy, um, Elizabeth Warren, and co are unveiling legislation to create an independent inspector general at the fed um she's going to get a clause right into power over this svb stuff considering the uh, fed oversight of the bank leading up to the problems um as far as shifting the deadwood over there the fdrc have delayed the bidding the bidding deadline for the Silicon Valley Bank until tomorrow. Um, they've had several attempts or tried several times to offload, um, as I say, this deadwood, and they are coming up unsuccessful at the moment. Not sure why, either they're setting too high a price for it or no one wants to touch the uh, stinking bag of poo with a barge pole. Um, but they keep uh, trying and trying. So over to the event last night and uh, POW. So the Fed went the 25, as expected. They changed language in the statement. Um, they now say some additional policy firming may be appropriate, uh, whereas before it was saying that uh, ongoing increases are likely appropriate. So a bit of a dial down there on that. Um, one of the key sentences in the statement was that the US banking system is sound and resilient. Recent developments are likely to result in tighter credit conditions for households and businesses and to weigh on economic activity, hiring and inflation. Uh, the extent of these effects is uncertain. That was a bit of a catch all uh, line in there because it covers everything. If the economy starts turning softer, they can use the excuse it was this banking problem. If it doesn't, they can say that uh, the banking problem has been solved by their measures and 
you know, they can continue. And basically, it's a win-win for them any which way it turns out. But it really has covered all sorts of bases uh, in terms of what may happen to the economy. Um, then Fed was out, uh, Powell was out with his uh, usual stuff in the presser. And uh, one of the funny things was he said that, um, talking about the uh, bank stuff, he says, all depositor savings are safe. And yet, literally, as he finished that line, not minutes after, Yellen was speaking as well. And she said she is not considering insuring all uninsured bank deposits. So a bit of, uh, uh, let's say, left hand, right hand going on there. I.e., uh, one not knowing what the other one's doing um, because opposing comments from that, um, which has uh, taken up a bit of press talk this morning. Um, further to the banking stuff. Powell said that isolated banking problems, if left unaddressed, can threaten the banking system and the Fed will use all the tools needed. Um, policymakers generally expect subdued growth to continue. Almost everyone on the FOMC sees risks on growth as weighted to the downside. Uh, we expect growth risks to come in better into better balance over time. Um, he said that they, con they considered a pause on rates, um, but that a hike was supported by a strong consensus. So they, they could have paused. Um, the need for further hikes will be based on actual and expected effects of credit tightening in particular. So now we've all got to look at uh, credit numbers coming out of the US. Uh, rate cuts in 2023 are not our baseline expectations. If we need to raise rates higher than expected, we will. Um, the recent liquidity provision that increased the balance sheet size was not intended to alter the stance of monetary policy. There were a few uh, wonky people thinking that that jump in um, the balance sheet, how they came to this conclusion, I don't know, was QE, i.e. they stopped QT and they injected money. Um, that wasn't the case. That was just that uh, banking funding program that they put in place. They got the liquidity and slapped it on the balance sheet. Um, so after all that, um, it's been taken as a fairly dovish Fed. Um, he didn't quite do the same as the ECB in saying there's no risks from the banking stuff, um, although they, he has made the uh, determination that there's a difference between monetary policy and um, financial stability policy, uh, but he has put it all under the same umbrella in terms of what they do for rates. Um, because, as I said, that first sentence where they are saying that the fallout from this could impact credit conditions and the economy. So overall, it's been dovish. Forecasts have already started to be cut. Uh, Bank of America cut their terminal rate by 25 pips to the 5 to 5.25 percent mark. Uh, UBS now see no hike in June where they saw one before. They've also lowered their terminal rate uh, to 5 to 5.25 from 5.25 to 5.5. So what do you make of it, guys? Was it uh, massively dovish or was it just uh, acknowledging the problems they got? Um, for me, uh especially the pressure, it had a little bit for both sides. So it's for me, it's, it's a matter of interpretation at the moment. And that's why I think we're seeing the market kind of being a little bit um, hesitant. So it looks like um, the um, the final rate, the, the, how do you call it? The terminal rate is yeah. very close now. I think we'll probably have maybe one more hike unless inflation starts doing something stupid. Um, but the whole point is how long do they stay there? And this is what um, the market mover yesterday was. I don't think anything, there was any big surprise. Yes, Powell maybe was slightly on the dovish side. I, I wouldn't call him very dovish yesterday, uh, but um, <clears throat> he did uh, talk a lot about the market pricing cuts and uh, in 2023. And by the way, the market's still pricing cuts. We are pricing just under another, let's say half a hike um, in May, and then we're pricing three cuts by year end, which, you know, they're, they, they, the, Fed, the Fed are telling us that this is not going to happen, at least now, you know, this is what they're telling us. So there was something for both sides. The way I've read it, 
is that I thought it was a dovish, uh, um, my interpretation is dovish, simply because when you're on a hiking cycle and the market's pricing cuts, what do you do first? If you want to stop and you want to um, pivot eventually, you first talk about where the terminal rate is, right? And then you start talking about what happens afterwards. So, you know, it's the indication now is that the terminal rate is very close. And, but, but they did say that, uh, Powell did say that um, the cuts are really out of the question for now. I think they're going to come into the question, uh, you know, a couple of months from now, maybe, especially if the economy starts worsening more. Um, but for now, we are getting to this point where now I think we're at the end. And I think the, um, the pivot is coming closer uh, than they are telling us. Hence, the market pricing it. Uh, do I think the market's a bit aggressive in pricing, you know, three 25 cuts by year end? Probably, yeah. But um, I think the market is not completely out of its mind. And, um, and uh, I, you know, my interpretation of yesterday was that it is, it was a dovish um, hike. And uh, I am going to trade it that way. So I'm actually going to go with later today and update for all the subscribers, all my macro views, and I'm going to be getting a little bit um, uh, bearish dollar. And I'm already a little bit bearish dollar. And uh, I'll be definitely looking to sell into any dollar rallies that we get. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, as you can see there from the dots on the on this side, the left hand side is last night's updated dots. On the other side is the ones from uh, the last meeting uh, last year. Um, you can see it's the, the 2024 stuff hasn't really changed an awful lot. It's still pretty widespread. I would have thought maybe some of these lower numbers would have shifted up a bit higher, um, but it's not really changed at all. Even the, the 2023 dots uh, have not changed, you know, that much. Uh, in fact, the, the most hawkish has even come down at a uh, dot uh, or level. Um, so the market's looked at that as well. Not much change. There hasn't been a reinforcing of that. Um, we were expecting that ceiling to, to go higher. Um, and they said that it might, Powell said it might have gone higher had we not had this banking stuff. Um, but I think the big difference made and if you compare it to the ECB, is that they didn't say, OK, once we're over this hump, we're back on the hike path. Um, it's all very conditional. Um, OK, what, what do you make of it all? Yeah, um, he went uh, more data dependent than he was already in the last meeting. Uh, I would argue, though, that the dots are showing the extra 25 BPs uh, to come, right? So um, if you look, uh, your, your the latest one is the left hand side, right? Yeah. The concentration is a bit bigger above the uh, the five percent, yeah, and and we got an extra dot there closer to six percent. But um, no, and, and as you say, I mean, and it's a dovish hike for for what um, we could have expected. But the thing is, most of us or most of the market was actually expecting such a such a, an outcome. So the the market actually got what it um, what it wanted, and um, as you were saying earlier, that that famous Yellen line in the middle of his uh, press conference, I, I think, did more damage to the dollar than um, it, it provided for the second uh, the second wind um, in in the dollar sell off, and that's where also because the the the, the equity markets were not really panicking anywhere. But when she came out with that, all of a sudden the thing started to turn south, right? Um, so I, to me, it's not a pivot yet. They, they're just leaving everything open now on the table. And uh, I'm going to trade it that way. Um, I'm, I'm also um, a bit bearish dollars. Um, I've, I've been, well, the, the week before or so, I was long cabled, and yesterday, uh, uh, and, and I sold those out, perhaps a bit too early, but then uh, yesterday I flipped into euro dollar longs. Um, I'm still actually relatively positive on the euro as, as such as well, because the ECB is now really catching up, right, in whether it be in actions or even their, their words. So um, um, I think euro dollar may have a little more legs than, than some other some other stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, it's, it is a it is a dovish hike uh, this time. But I would not call it a pivot yet. And um, 
there's something interesting because if the market prices uh, and you have to go up to the to you have to go back to the ten year or so um, um, right um, if if the market really prices starts to price cuts um, we have seen the uh, the housing market um, the last what is it two numbers Ryan starting to pick up a little bit. Yeah. If, if yeah. you look at if you look at if if this market really starts to price in more cuts uh, um, further down the curve, um, it could make uh, the the uh, the mortgage uh, rates a bit uh, cheaper and, and underpin the housing market, which in which in turn is going to to come back to the to the Fed then afterwards, and and they are going to say, well, if the jobs market holds up and the housing market is now holding up again, we are starting to hike again. But that will be for the next, uh, the next move. I think in the meantime, um, I, I agree. Uh, I think the dollar is, is for the time being at least uh, a set of rallies. Although tomorrow could be another interesting day coming up with the uh, with the um, the PMI. Tomorrow it's PMI day, right? Um, so tomorrow yeah. could be uh, could be another funky day. Um, and 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 again, I'm I'm still not like of of the idea of personally at least where you go like all right i'm selling dollars and i'm buying them back come uh, end of july you know i mean i'm i'm still very active in uh, in managing whatever i have on the books uh, but the bias is is for a slightly lower dollar right now right yeah you can see that in in yesterday's nba the rate came down 6.48 percent you know quite yeah. a steep dip on that um and yeah you know we'll have to see like you say it's there's been a bit of divergence in the data, as we've been yeah. mentioning this week. Um, so you need to see what what strings are being pulled which way. If housing is strong, mm. as Kay said, if jobs are still strong, that suggests the consumer will remain strong. Um, and we're back in soft landing, no landing territory again. Um, yeah. and, but, but I think we are, we are in now a period where we are going to see uh, divergence in, in some data. Some, some are going to come in better, other ones... Uh, uh, less and uh, it, it yeah. could be a bit of a, of a funny market to to trade and that's why I also think um, it's still safer to have a bit of a bias but not getting too much merit to to one position you know exactly exactly and, and the case in point was that Philly Fed services number you know when in the last round of ISM and PMIs manufacturing was soft services was very strong um, this this week we've seen Empire and Philly manufacturing both weak and the Philly service is very weak as well. So, you know, they are small regional numbers, but they're the first numbers we got to go on this month. Yeah. And if it follows that pattern and we see services in the PMIs dipping now, um, that's going to throw a few cats among the pigeons, I think, because it's mm -hmm. going to mm -hmm. suggest that uh, it's going to be a bit of a wobbly way forward rather than any real trends developing. Mm -hmm. um, but that will all lead us up to the next round of central banks uh, meetings uh, in a month couple of months or whatever um but for now we can forget about them until uh, well until the bank of england of course which is coming up um so do you guys think that anything that's happened at the other central banks uh, is going to lead the boe to uh, change its tone um i'm still thinking that that inflation number this week is going to uh, yesterday is going to maybe send them uh, out a bit more hawkish than usual in the in the message yeah that that threw uh, some spanner in, in in the works right um yeah because the the the, the plan was for one one more dovish 25 uh, bps hike and done um i don't know this this there may be a bit of change of tone there and all of a sudden uh, um the bank of england coming out a little more hawkish than uh, than the rest and we have to say, barring some numbers, um, also like yeah, well, um, other numbers, but but the main numbers are holding up pretty okay, right? In the UK right yeah. now, we didn't really see big uh, catastrophic numbers, right? O only the, the the credit and the plastic uh, credit card numbers were 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 not great, but the rest I don't recall really having uh, having seen extremely bad data on the sterling. Um, but the market doesn't trade it that way. The market is trading sterling still on the on the defensive, uh, testifying the euro sterling, testifying the cable having trouble to uh, to, to keep it above uh, 123 right now. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think the surprise trade today will be uh, more hawkish 
Bank of England. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I think I, I didn't get anywhere close to my plan for cable uh, over the Fed uh, and the inflation. So I'm, I'm a bit more neutral about trading that one. But I think euro sterling could be the one um, because despite what the Bank of England may do, even if they do talk slightly hawkish, um, it's going to be at the dovish end of hawkishness, if you like. Uh, so I think any gain you get in a quid, particularly against euro sterling, I think that might get picked up. Um, any decent dip there might get picked up because the euro is still very strong um, and that's going to outweigh anything that the pound does right now. Um, so that's what I'm going to be looking at for the, for the BOE. If maybe get a dip to uh, sub 80s again, 88s, um, down to the 88, 60, 70 area. Let's show it on the chart, um, which we got a little tap down to yesterday. Um, so that area is showing up once again. Yeah, I might, uh, I might look to take a little something on that if we get a decent dip in that one, um, if the euro remains strong elsewhere. Uh, Stel, you got any thoughts for uh, the BOE? Yeah, I, I would agree with Cayman. I think the inflation print really has um, complicated things. And let's face it, the um, inflation is still probably the number one issue with, with many people. And the inflation in the UK, as you guys know very well, is rampant, right? So um, what can the Bank of England do? Well, the only tool they have is rates and they're definitely going to do 25. I, I think there is a good chance now that they're going to indicate that, look, if inflation doesn't start dropping, because it's rising again, right? If it doesn't start yeah. dropping, uh, they're going to have to keep going. So I have, a, I fear that the um, Bank of England may be uh, more hawkish than expected. Having said that, the Bank of England is always as dovish as they can be, which is annoying. <clears throat> but, um, you know, with that inflation print, I really don't see how they can be dovish in any way um we are expecting a 6-3 split aren't we yes yeah. which, which uh, oof, i don't know even if we'll get that uh we do have two doves who are probably gonna uh remain uh dissenting but uh i don't know if we're gonna get a third one so man um, man, man right? yeah man is probably going to vote for a 50 no yeah yes. yeah yeah that's I true so. i mean that's just the guess you know yeah, I, I yeah. think there's going to be a, um, the, the, the chances are there's going to be a hawkish surprise. Uh, having said that, you know, the only weapon that the, yeah. the central banks have is, is rates. And, uh, you know, you're going to make goods and services um, stop increasing at such a rapid pace by strangling the economy and, you know, uh, causing job losses. <laughs> it's, it's a rock and a hard place, right? But uh, that's all they can do. Uh, so, like, yeah, I my, my view is... Sorry? That's what I get to pay the big bucks for. Big bucks for, yeah, Bailey, a big man. Um, no, so my view is this. I, I think uh, a bigger risk of a hawkish surprise. Yeah, I think uh, so. Ryan. The vote numbers are going to be important because Ryan. I think... That, yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah, I have a question for you. This, yeah, yeah. this Brexit thing, we, we know it's been going on uh, for, for ages now, but if, if uh, Sunak would have been... Um, he the, voted against the Brexit thing. Do you think that Bank of England is looking at Brexit right now, or is it just um, secondary? And 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 we'll we'll see what happens uh, if it has an impact on the economy or not. Uh, I think it's secondary because this is this portion is all the Northern Ireland mm -hmm. stuff. Um, they're they're more worried about you know what's moving to uh, Frankfurt or other or Paris. Um, what's happening with financials, that side of things. Um, you know, they always uh, pay lip service, the Brexit stuff, but this this thing is contained with Northern Ireland. Um, it's more politics than anything else. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree. Yeah, but uh, it's just a question. Which, because I, yeah. I, I see uh, when when we look at stuff, we, we see a lot of people trying to ask questions about it and, and, and oh, Brexit this and Brexit that and sterling should go down and whatever. But um, it, it's it's perhaps just an interesting fact to, to, to just mention it for, for a minute and, uh, uh, and, and just uh, confirming that it, it's not really on a, a, a first line topic on a, on a Bank of England agenda. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um... Yeah, and as we said with this Northern Ireland stuff, it hasn't been really impactful for the pound. Um, 
Plus, you can never trust it. You get a headline saying that, yeah, great, we've got a deal, and it still takes three months before they actually uh, put pen to paper and rubber stamp it. Mine um, three months. Yeah, well, that's just three months just for this one. <laughs> um, and, yes, it is still ongoing because the vote yesterday was only on that, what they call in the Stormont break part of it. Um, so it wasn't even the full vote on the rest of it. Oh, one day it'll be over when we're older and greyer. Um, but back to the uh, BOE, and I think, yeah, I think the inflation maybe puts the risk towards this vote number coming in at seven point at seven to two again, um, but that'll be a minor thing. I think the 25's done and dusted. I don't think they'll go anything like a 50 just on this one pickup number and in inflation. Um, but yes, how the minutes show who voted for what, i.e. what type of hike increase could be important as well. If there are some who have shifted back to 50s, um, that'll be a hawkish uh, slant there as well. Um, so it's going to be what the announcement is and then digging into the minutes and the statement and everything else to see what's changed. And obviously, we'll be doing that here in the Forex Analytics uh, room as normal. Um, Trading-wise, as I say, I've, I've touched on the euro sterling. I'm not really inclined to, to touch the pound, maybe unless something pushes it up to... Uh, that 124 area, and then potentially I'll be looking at that just for a pure tech trade um, rather than anything else. Um, this big zone up to 124, 124 and a half um, could be a good range top to have a look at over that one. Uh, for me, Euro dollar, I didn't actually do anything new over the Fed yesterday. It was more just uh, sitting back and uh, knocking pieces off the my euro dollar long. Um, it's run into trouble up at some half decent resistance. This 109, call it 109.40, is an age old level. Uh, I'm not sure it might be a bit messy to see it all the way back. Um, where are we? Just around here. Um, so you can see if you get your micro, micro uh, microscope out, it's been a level that has been in play for several times. Most recently, after we had that move, uh, well, before and after that move over the 110, um, you can see we found we had resistance before the 110 move, and we had resistance after that move failed. Uh, so that's why that's sitting on my chart. We've also got this longer term trend line that we're knocking up against, um, which comes in from down here, 2016 through 2020. So we're hitting the underside of that again. So there's a bit of tech around this, um, call it 109.20, 109.40 area. That's keeping things contained for now. Um, this was my big zone up here, the 108.30.70. Um, obviously, big event like the FOMC, it just carved through it. Um, at the moment, it's holding near the top of it, around that 108.70 on this dip here. Um, I would expect if we get through there to maybe see something coming in around 108.30. Um, but if I think we're going to see a situation again where we need to know where we close uh, the week. If we close the week above 109, for me, that sets us up for a move to the 110. Uh, if we don't, if we close below, then maybe we set up a bit of a higher range, maybe 109s down to 107s. Uh, that will become the new 105, 107s. Um, because I don't see any reason why we rock it massively from here on out. Um, unless the Fed, you know, are really done with hikes um, and then the market really goes into uh, pricing cut mode all while the ECB get over the banking hump and continue hiking. Uh, if that's the case, I expect uh, euro across the board to remain well bid for a while longer. Um, again, it still may not mean we're going up another thousand pips from here um, just on the ECB continuing to hike, but we should see the euro remain will bid on dips as well. Um, Kay, I know you're looking at uh, some of the euro crosses as well. Do you see the same situation there? The, the euro two is yeah. in uh, BTFD yeah. mode. Um, euro in the, yeah, euro in the by the this mode, but um, a couple of crosses, euro Aussie, euro Canada, uh, they're, they're showing, I'm not saying exhaustion, but they are that we are in, in into uh, interesting levels. I don't know if um, if Stel wanted to show something today. Otherwise, I can do a quick uh, a quick overview. I can because I'm not going to be here tomorrow. 
Okay. So I will, uh, I mean, I will do it today. You know, he's thinking off, folks. God, bloody hell. It's a, it's, a, it's a school holiday tomorrow, and I promised my girls I'm going to take them out to lunch and all that. So we haven't done that in months. So you don't I'll take us out for lunch. God. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, let me just pull that up a little bit. So the um, the Fed, obviously, yesterday, the big event. And as I said before, we got a little bit for both sides, although I interpret it um, as being dovish. I've heard uh, a lot of people making hawkish interpretations. Um, and the main main question remains, do they cut this year as priced by the market? The way the Fed is talking to us now, they're saying no. But obviously, I don't trust the Fed and they can change um uh, very, very quickly the, what they're telling us. So, uh, yields. Let's face it, yields are driving many of the markets and we saw good support. We know we, we had been talking about this area of, of interest around uh, you know 335 to 340-ish. We tested it on a few daily occasions. Marginally went to new lows intraday and then bounced back. So, yields have found support. And for me, for yields to drop below, that means that A, either inflation is dropping very quickly in the US, so the next print, um, uh, or B, we get um, the banking crisis uh, flares up and we get more trouble. Um, uh, and uh, that will obviously mean flight to safety and bonds are the first, one of the first places where uh, people go to. So. Bonds are supported, uh, yields are supported, sorry. Um, so that brings some stability to markets. Um, as, a, as a result, equity markets are also trading pretty well. Um, I have to repeat, I think they're trading uh, in a very resilient manner over the last year, uh, very controlled and gradual move lower. Yes, we're 20% or so lower from the highs, but uh, just under 20% actually. But still, this is not a sign of panic. And um, I have this little uh, area here drawn out. We're almost there. If we get towards 39.30, I think it's a it's a place where I'm going to look to uh, do some uh, short-term trades. I don't usually do them, but the equity markets have to say it uh, and stress it. They feel short. They feel squeezy. Every dip gets bought uh, recently, and I feel and I fear that the path of least resistance is to go higher. So uh, you know, I think that. Um, I want to be buying dips, and I think we're, we're close to the first level that I'm looking at. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get towards 4,200 um, uh, in the next move. Obviously, this has risks, and the main risk if is if the market starts taking out the cuts from 2023. If we start pricing those out, that means we're pricing rates to be higher for the rest of the year. And as a result, maybe you know the, the curve further out goes a bit higher in yields. Um, and uh, that will push uh, equities lower. But um, for the moment, given what we know right now, um, I think stocks are buy on dip. Uh, in exactly the opposite way, uh, is what I feel about the dollar. And these two are, are correlated usually. They're inversely correlated. So dollar sells off stocks rally. Um, <clears throat> I think the dollar should be sold on rallies. Uh, the Dixie, if we manage to get anywhere near this um, uh, this line, which coincides with the uh, 50 DMA, so anywhere near one or three and a half would be a lovely place to short. And we can get reasons for a dollar rally. Um, like um, Kay, I think said we have PMIs tomorrow, and we, we you know, we're going to be getting uh, more and more data. And uh, if the Fed, um, you know, uh, Fed speakers continue to be hawkish regarding the the rate cuts priced into this year, I think uh, there's a very good chance that we might get that little push up in the dollar. And I would love, love, love to sell that. Um, the one I really want to sell is the dollar Norway. I missed that. I was waiting for 11 or close to 11. We got to 11.86. So unfortunately, I missed that. But um, any rallies towards this, uh, you know, 10.70, 10.75, I'm going to definitely look at. And obviously, dollar Mex is another one that I really like to sell. I've said this many times. Uh, very nice carry. 
um, even with the Fed hiking more, the carry is there. Uh, and, uh, and I like that. Uh, and um, I also want to be buying dips in the euro dollar. So any dip towards 107.4, uh, previous high here, there's a little bit, it seems to be an area of interest. So, and this, we also have the DMA, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's an area of interest. So anywhere just below maybe 107.3, I think uh, uh, is something I'm going to look at, but we're not there yet. You know, with all these things that I'm talking about, we're not there yet, but you know, I don't mind waiting. Um, and um, so otherwise currency wise, not much for me. I am opposite to um, you guys regarding the Euro pound. I know you guys are looking to buy dips. I'll be looking to sell rallies into the 90s, but I guess you can do, you can have both, right? You can have a dip and then rally it, you know, a couple of hundred pips, that's not bad. Um, and um, uh, so I'm going to be looking to, um, to sell proper rallies in the euro pound if we get them. The euro has been very strong recently and uh, given the apparent uh, central bank divergence, uh, this could continue. And uh, I would love to see a rally into the 90s um, to start shorting, but obviously not yet. Um, Stelios, yeah. yes. Could you give us just a ten minutes, uh, ten minutes heads up, so we can take profit be before you start to <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm, I'm always early. I'm always early. So when I do sell, you know, it's going another 30, 40, 50 pips before it. Right. Uh, re- <laughs> anyway, um, um, so uh, metals. Again, you know, we've talked about metals. This was a really nice impulsive move. Um, and uh, from the 1800s, if you go to a four hour, it looks a lot better. And, you know, it's a nice impulsive move. Nice little um, consolidation. Didn't even, didn't even get, let's have a look actually how far it got. Didn't even get, well, almost touched the 38.2. So yeah, okay, it it got to 38.2. By the way, I should have seen that. That was a nice little bottom here uh, on the 38.2. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, bottom line, metals are still trading well. Um, gold is outperforming silver today, but silver has been doing pretty well considering. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, this level, there's a fib here at 23. It's a nice big round number as well. A few lows on the back here. 23 is the first proper level that we need to um, um, pass. But then really it is um, this 24 and change. Uh, when, when, not if, when that goes, I think that's the um, beginning of the next big move. And look at this. This is a, albeit um, lengthy, but very orderly uh, correction, uh, some kind of you know long bull flag. I know it's it's quite lengthy here, but still it's a very very impulsive move higher correction. And if you think about what's happened with rates all these uh, past twelve months or so, my God, you know they have traded very well. Gold has traded really well. If you think that during this period here. Uh, We've had massive tightening, massive. I mean, you know, very strong tightening at very fast pace, yields rising, uh, all that. And still we're pretty much, you know, within touching distance of the um, all-time highs. So metals have done very well. I'm looking to add to my silver longs. Um, I'm well over all the buck and a half now in the money also or so. And um, I'm going to be looking to add either on a break of this uh, 24 and change, or if we um, actually have to look at the downside, haven't looked at the downside in a while, but uh, probably if we, if we get, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to say something now on the fly, I'm going to have a look at the levels and uh, probably post it in the chat room. But overall, um, metal's doing well. The gold-silver ratio has a big decision to make here. Look at that, uh, 50 DMA, 200 DMA, both converging. Uh, there's a fib here as well. I mean, if we break below or when we break below 85 or so, it's not that far now. Uh, this, I think, is going to be a very big technical um, sign that we're going higher in prices because when the, the ratio goes down, more often than not, the price is going up. Um, so this is something I'm looking at. Cryptos, we always look at cryptos. Yes, we've had a really nice uh, rally. Uh, Bitcoin is now hesitating on this uh, 23 
0.6 fib also these this area down here on the way down we did slow down quite a bit here so big hurdle to um to overcome but you know if we do get a, a, a rally in risk which i think we will theoretically this should also follow so um a move towards 35k it wouldn't be out of the question and a similar story in Ethereum. Ethereum is, is heading into a little bit more of a resistance here, uh, but, um, you know, Ethereum is a Bitcoin on drugs, so um, it's probably going to outperform on the way up. Um, oil <coughs> is an interesting one. I read so many reports that the market's still relatively tight and there's a big risk uh, of OPEC cuts if prices uh, keep going lower. I have a I have a bad uh, difficult time um, in the short term um, seeing oil rallying. Um, you know the, the the global situation it just doesn't inspire confidence, right? I mean, oil is a, is a, is very um, sensitive to economic growth and the, the whole the global environment. Of course, it's controlled. The supply is controlled, so anything we say can be undone within you know one days uh, um, OPEC decisions, but um, the way I see it, we've broken down uh, from this um, triangle. We're coming back, maybe try to retest, I don't know, but I, th I want to be a seller of oil on rallies in the short term. In the medium term, I think um, inflation uh, on its own is going gonna, is gonna to make um, oil prices grind higher uh, as we go. So, um, yeah, oil is a very tricky one, and it has very, very big weekly swings. So I would be, um, I would be very cautious trading that. Anyway, that's it uh, for me, more or less. Thanks, I hope mate. it was helpful, and uh, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, thank you, mate. Um, yeah, I agree with you on that uh, oil trade in particular. It, the bounce so far looks uh, pretty weak. Um, can't even get up to that broken level around the seventy twos. Um, there we are trying to hold above uh, 70 bucks. So, you know, early steps, I think, uh, on that one. Uh, Kay, do you want to have a little perusal round, a quick one? Uh, shall I do it now or shall we call it a day? And, uh... Uh, it's, we've, we've, we've gone through enough, I think. Let's let's have Kay do it tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah, it's fine by me. Fine by me. Save uh, yeah, the just, best. I just wanted to add, if you, if you go back on to the euro dollar for a sec, um, yeah. I have... Um, well, you know, I, I have two um, decent levels, and they they're coming back from um, zoom out, um, zoom out if you can on the, coming back from a little bit higher as well. If you uh, if you go back all the way down, all the way from uh, yeah, oh, okay, um, it, never mind, never mind. It, there's there's a few levels I'm looking at in the one twenty one hundred twenty five sixty five and. As a matter of fact, 109 and a quarter was the top this morning. So uh, I think the 109.2565 is going to be a big enough zone to keep an eye on today on the euro dollar on the top side. If we get renewed uh, dollar weakness, um, I won't um, I won't hold back from uh, yeah. There we go. I won't hold back from uh, um, taking profits uh, up there. No, it's actually it's actually tighter. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'll I'll yeah. show it uh, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, exactly. exactly what yeah. I'm looking at in euro dollar. Yeah, cool. Well, just uh, under 40 minutes until the Bank of England. Um, so that's our next focus. And tomorrow we shall chew through that one and see what the clowns have done over that meeting. Um, we've had Turkey out. Uh, they've held rates at 8.5%. Uh, so unchanged there from the guys in Turkey and Erdonomics fighting inflation over there. Thank you very much to everybody. Uh, have a great day off tomorrow, Stel. Um, we shall no, we shall cover everything here. Don't it, worry. It's, we'll it's not up. a day off. I'm just gonna, not going to be on the flow show. I'll, I'll be around after, uh, otherwise. Okay. Fine. So That's you cool. are the basically cool off, <laughs> the least important part of the day. No, I'm kidding, of course. I love you all. <laughs> love you. <laughs> yeah, have a good one anyway. Uh, thank you, everybody else. Thanks, viewers, for coming and watching us here. Thanks to Kay. Uh, we shall catch you all tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>